We've got a 2020 Bad Boy Maverick with 77 hours on it, as you can tell, not, not abusive hours to it. So we've got a good spindle and bearings here. So smooth and quiet. Got the middle one. A little bit of noise, but not bad. And then we've got the chute side. And obviously we have an issue. So that's the project. Right, so we've got a three quarter inch socket. And what we're gonna do is take off the top pulley so that we can access the four bolts that hold the spindle on the deck. So now that we've got that loose, A little bit longer than I expected. There we go. So, should be able to slide that off. Perfect. I have not done this before. So this is the first time I've tackled this job. So now we can access the four bolts. And then of course, take that collar off. And for reference, those four bolts are a 9 16 inch socket up on top. So we'll take those off. I'm gonna see if I can break them loose with the impact, the bottom. Otherwise, I've gotta go through and clean that up quite a bit to get a wrench head on the other side of the bolt. So we're gonna see if they come loose and I will clean everything up when we get it apart. That one's a little bit tighter. Oh, we got it mostly loose, but a couple of those are spinning as expected. So we'll get those the rest of the way and that spindle should just come on out. Okay, so we got the four bolts out, got it down onto the floor and I will be cleaning this up. We don't need to videotape that and cleaning out where these bolts are, but yeah, everything came out pretty smooth considering again, it's only 77 hours on the machine. It's not very old. Kind of too bad to have to do this, but I'm thankful that the tools are all standard so far. And we've, so far, all we've used for tools to get it to this point is a three quarter inch impact socket. And then I've got a nine sixteenth, so three quarter for the top. And then I will have a nine sixteenth to take those off. So we'll take this apart, clean it up. So with just a vacuum cleaner, scraper, and a couple of rags, Right now I've got the assembly cleaned up to a reasonable point where I'm gonna take off the collar next and try to get out the original bearings. Um, I'm not sure exactly how tight they'll be in there or which the original bearing is. I see some numbering on there. Uh, 6206-RSA, this is the original factory. I don't know, and then I just see set and well, China, I guess. So anyhow, let's get these, uh, let's get this assembly popped apart. Working on the collar next. So far to get the assembly to this point, we have all standard tools, nothing metric. And uh, this is no different. For the next part, we need a three thirty second Allen wrench. And that's what's gonna be used to take off the collar, okay? So we'll get that off now and see what uh, what we get on to next. Got about two turns counterclockwise on and the collar comes off real easy. And at that point, yep, looks like it'll just try to do this with one hand. We're, we're taping today with a phone. Left the GoPro in the house, so bear with me. Should be able to just slide apart. Okay, so all we did is we took two hands, no tools, and we had pulled the center shaft out the rest way out the bottom and then we'll start exposing that center portion and uh, once I get this cleaned up a little bit maybe I can narrow it down to see if both bearings need to be replaced just one I'll have it apart so we'll probably do both but we are going to look for the right tools to pound out the bearings we've got the spindle assembly with the bad bearings in it right now in the orientation I just started the way that it normally sits on the deck pinched in the vise so that I can can hold it while I pound out the old bearings. Because they're the old bearings, I'm not worried about scoring them or causing any damage, so I'm gonna use a large screwdriver um, to get in and make contact. 
I press this out of the way so I can make contact with the bottom bearing. There we go, hard to focus on there. And use a rubber mallet and pound the bearings out. So at this point, I'm gonna put down the camera, use a rubber mallet, pound the bearings out, should fall, make a big noise, and uh, we'll get this one out. We'll turn around, do the same on the other side. We are just about loose. You can tell the bearings just about ready to fall out. And well, there you go. So this is what we got. Probably clean it off, but dirty. Some of this dirt was from my hand, but hard to tell which is bad currently. I don't feel terrible. Now this one doesn't want to spin too easy. So I think the bottom one closest to the to the blade was the worst. Yeah, this one doesn't feel bad, but we're gonna replace them both since we've got it apart. So we'll flip it around. Same method, just the opposite direction of pound this uh, bearing out. Now this one's just about loose. There you go. Something I noticed on orientation that I found interesting is that the rubber side or the black side on both the top and the bottom were facing in. So I know there's a reason for that, but just to yeah. share. The bottom one is the worst one. And I took off with just one of these little hooks. I took out the rubber gasket, the rubber seal. I think that's what this is. And uh, this I have not touched. This is what it looked like. I mean, this is the, this is what was in there. So yeah. Nothing but gum, grime, and not good stuff. So just wanted to share that. Now we're gonna do the reassembly. And for this, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of anti-seize around where the bearings go on so that if I have to do this again, let's say it lasts even a little bit longer, that they'll come out fairly easy. Nothing excessive, you know, anti-seize goes a long, long ways, but uh, we're just future planning. All right, so we've got both of those surfaces coated. And then we've got the two bearings. I'm going to start with the top. And again, this is the top, this is the bottom of the spindle. We line it up. I don't know if I can push it in by hand. If I, I do have what was suggested. It's a little larger than what I wanted, but it's what I had two by four, in this case, a two by six. So line it up and square it off, as you can see the bearing there, and then with a rubber mallet, I'm going to pound that bearing down into its groove. Perfect. We've got the top bearing in, looks like it's flush, and I see no issues with the way that one went. On the bottom, remember, you got to put it inside your collar first. Call it the collar because once you put that bottom bearing in, you won't be able to get that in. So we'll do the same as we did with the top bearing. We'll line it up. And I see no defining characteristic which way it should have to go because both sides have seals. This side does have the identifiers from the uh, bearing itself, the cross-reference number and such. But because I do not see any other um, defining reasons to switch it, that's the direction we're going to go. Again, we're going to keep it real squared off. The rubber mallet, and we'll get that pounded down into place. Almost got it. So just a couple more, and it will be down in place. Everything looks like it is squared up the way it should be. Now that we have both bearings in the center collar, because we're using sealed bearings and I have not modified the spindle, there are no grease certs, so it's staying dry per se in there. Put just a tiny bit of antices on the center shaft here. It will go together hopefully a little bit smoother and uh, we'll do that now. So going from the bottom, I might have to tip it up this way to get that center collar lined up. Perfect. Once you get that lined up, it should go through much easier. Perfect. So that should be all the way down. So what we will do is we'll take our collar and this will be using that 
three thirty second Allen wrench. I'm going to put it on exactly where it was scored before. I'm not sure if you can see that on the video, but we're going to put that all right like that. And again, it's all the way down. It fit together really nicely. So I'm going to tighten that. Try to get my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Good. Once we are at this point, so we've got it reassembled up to this point, we have our collar tight. We will not be able to put on the pulley for the belt or the key or the top until it's reassembled into the mower deck because this actually comes up to the bottom of the mower deck as you'll see in a minute. And then we can put the rest of the top on and stung everything down. All right, now we are ready to take our reassembled assembly, a spindle assembly, and it goes up from the bottom. That's why we did not put the pulley or anything on the top. So we have to get this under there and get the four bolts back lined up and snug them up. So that's what we'll do now. The bolts go from the bottom upright. So I'll just finger tighten everything that I can so you can see it. See what you get to go through when you do yours. Let's be honest, with this design, it'll probably happen again. And when you spend seven and eight thousand dollars on a lawnmower, you're probably going to do what you got to keep running, even if we shouldn't have to do this at seventy-seven dollars. We've got the keyway here. Try to line everything up. You know. Got the top bolt, which is a three quarter inch wrench on that. And then we have the washer, which is kind of like a dome and that'll go down and it does have a lock washer. We'll put that on now. And I'm sure there's torque specs and everything else. I'm gonna check those before I run it, but for the sake of reassembly and video purposes, we're not gonna get into that here. Now for the test. and quiet. I don't think I've ever heard it this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> 